Hello, my name is Alan Henningsen, and I wanted to introduce myself, a lot about my background, who I am, my real identity, and then start a journey with you. So welcome and thank you. So first of all, I was born in a small town in southern Indiana called Greensburg. I was raised by two loving parents, loved them very much, as well as a loving brother. So it was traditional family. We had lots of love. My parents sacrificed a lot for both of us. I went through the public school system in Greensburg. Um, thank Lord I did very well there as a student. But you know, uh, there's a difference between knowledge and wisdom. So I didn't have lots of wisdom at that time, of course, as any typical kid did. And I had lots of friends, um, and again, support of, of family. And then I progressed upward, like about through stupid things in teenage years. Um, and then the Lord God sent someone to me who was a friend, a friend above all friends at that time. Uh, his name's Rin Abel. Lord used him at one time over at his house. He shared the gospel of Jesus Christ with me, although I was raised in Methodist Church where we, we attended. Um, we did learn the Word of God. At that time, that church was not compromised. It was faithful to the Word of God. So, to do that, and I had heard the gospel before, but this time, uh, the Holy Spirit had pricked me and I was convicted. I uh, shared that. And on the way home, it was, I was 17 years old, I pulled over the car um, I was truly sorry for my sins and I asked, confessed that I needed Jesus to save me from my sins. Now, I'm not saying that the Lord, the sinner's prayer is anywhere in the Bible, of course. What is necessary for salvation is true heartfelt repentance and true heartfelt belief in the saving work and finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross that he died for my sins because I deserved the wrath of God. He took it in my place. He died, shed his blood. He rose again, he sent it back into heaven where he's coming again. That in itself, above all else, is where my identification stands. As a wretched sinner saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. Now, fast forward for that, both before and after become a Christian. And I cannot say maybe I was a false convert at that time, because I would go in to periods of, you know, new believers do often want to go, well, to share the gospel and beat people over the head with the Bible, which I did, but then I also drift back into periods of sin. Basically, I've broken all 10 commandments, committed abominations before our God, both before and becoming after a Christian, if it's that time true conversion. Um, but I did feel the Holy Spirit's convicting power, where it would feel not just sorry, but knowing I sinned against God. So, from there on, like I said, thankfully, I thank my parents so much, and my brother for their support and their love, and all my friends. Um, I would later go on to study at uh, universities, obtained a bachelor's degree at the University of Miami, where off and on my room and I, who was also a Christian, we would attend a Baptist church at Miami. Um, wasn't in a fellowship in school, something like that, but we did that, both um, shared a lot. But thereafter, I went to graduate school at the University of Miami, where the Lord provided amazing opportunities to travel, um, working with sharks and rays again in, in new places, and they're, they're great examples of God's amazing creations. Um, after attaining my master's at the University of Miami, um, I also, but before I finish that, worked for a Tropical Marine Fish Hatchery Collecting Place in the Florida Keys. Um, and as I mentioned, all that time, God would place people in my path 
to remind me of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The need to repent. And many of the things I did before, I long since repented for, repented of years and years ago, but there's other things I kept, because sin is always present. Until the Lord calls us home, or He returns. So that it was there, I encountered people who were like second parents to me, Terry and V. Clifton, who loved me as well, and I loved them. And also, um, as it were, their daughter Wendy, and also had son Jason, who was later called home to be as Lord to an accident. But so it's no accident whether in college and high school, when I would do stupid things, um, uh, drinking, anything like that, the Lord would send up at the right time. I particularly remember uh, doing stupid things like drinking too much, and then the Lord would send a, a a group of people were evangelizing for um, Campus Crusade for Christ at the right time. And also he provided people at the right time to just be examples and loving. So they, you know, basically call me back. So whether my first initial one was true conversion or not, but I do know after that the Lord had my heart. Um, I still struggle, of course, like any other you know, true believer with sin, um, but I seek to do it. And then years go by, years go by, I went to Baltimore, start working in the National Aquarium of Baltimore, and it wasn't any coincidence that God called me there, because it's there in Baltimore, where God led me to my beautiful and wonderful wife, Nancy, and we were incredibly blessed. Um, I don't deserve any of this. Obviously, God's grace and mercy, um, the love from the parents I had, but, and then the love from Nancy and Ian Kerbett. And you were also blessed with two fantastic um, children, AJ and Avery, who are both become fantastic young men. But also then, at that time, I sought, sought more and more after to get in and dig in the Word of God, knowing that His truth is living and active, piercing to the dividing sunder of soul and spirit, and that by grace each day is where we live, to repent daily to live for Him. So, and the needs of others, praying for others is great. Um, that brings me up, I've been at the National Aquarium for 31 years before I left there in April. Um, again, it's amazing as I go into the the next chapter of the journey where you discover where God is leading me now um, and solely by his grace each day we go on and live so I thank you I love you I want to thank you for your patience in this and hope that you get a chance to enjoy this journey with me that it's all for the glory of God Welcome to Journey with Alan. Step two today. I discuss my early childhood, how much I'm thankful to my parents, my loving brother, and how growing up as a kid. Now, fast forward to high school years when I had lots of friends, um, good friends, yes, but um, still, I didn't always do things right. I was a sinner, am a sinner, but one night a dear friend, his name is Ren Abel, I'll never forget this, whose life was transformed by the gospel of Jesus Christ, his family was transformed in a, in a radical way, one night over his house, took the time to share the true gospel of Jesus Christ with me, gave me a try, walked me through Romans, all the other um, places and encounter how sinful I was before a holy God, my need for a Savior, and how to find salvation in Christ alone. Well, that night, when I was 17, driving home, I was so convicted by the Holy Spirit, I pulled over, and I confessed Christ as Savior, many guys the center before a just God. Now, there is no such thing as a sinner's prayer in the Bible, so I will say that was that real conversion? 
I don't know, I believe because the Holy Spirit continued to convict me. However, right after as many new believers do, I went home and it was kind of like family, whoever would listen, trying to tell them about God, the new life in Christ, and they need to repent. However, a lot of it was just being um, morally right, you know, I try to be like, um, you know, pride, self-righteousness, those sins still were still trying to declare the gospel. Well, years went on, I had admitted confessionally, committed abominations before a holy God, you name it, but yes, still trying to live one foot walking before Christ and one in the world. This went on the whole time that loving, holy, sovereign God who kept seeking after me by placing people into my path at the right time. This might be a group I was witnessing for a campus crusade with Christ one time. And then lo and behold, he sovereignly placed this family in my path. When I was in college, um, and I've gone through a series of churches that are going to Baptist church. And later on, winding up in, in a, I'll get to that, this dear family, Terry and V. Clifton, Clifton, and V loved the Lord, and Terry did, but just growing in his faith. And their dear daughter, Wendy, at a time they had the son, little did I know that he would be called home by the Lord a few years later. They were like second parents to me. But we grew, and I grew along with them. And uh, later on, as the Lord would work on me, work on me, to the point where I followed Jesus. Not perfectly, no one ever does. Because, as we know, we're, while we're still on this earth, we sin. But just as we grow, we hate our sin more and more. And we see the holiness of God more and more. Throughout the time, and later on, I uh, took a job as a hatchery manager and catching and raising fish in the Florida Keys. I'm grateful for that experience. And then, after that, finished my master's degree by the grace of God. I was ready to give up on that. Um, applied for a job, though do I know the next adventure would begin to work at the National Aquarium, to move up to Baltimore, Baltimore, Maryland. And this, moving back, is in the year of 1999, where the next journey will begin. Welcome. This journey with Alan, I think I'm on step three now, so welcome back. As I proclaim you what's going on and the steps along my life I'll let take. And all not not luck, not chance, all govern under the sovereign hand of a mighty, holy, just, and loving God. Well, in 1989, I moved from Florida to the state of Maryland to work at the National Aquarium. Little did I know it wasn't only just to work at the aquarium, but I think also placed there so I would meet my wife, Nancy, a beautiful woman she is, she is. And that, I was so blessed by that time. And I had a lot of good years at the aquarium working there. Uh, raising fish, working with the sharks and rays, and a lot of good people there. But also, God kept working on me that I would want to serve him more. We joined early on, felt led to join um, Asgard Presbyterian Church, a fantastic Christ-centered Bible teaching church with a bunch of loving brothers and sisters, where it was led to be involved in the ministry there of teaching Sunday school, because I love kids, and I was blessed to serve there. It wasn't me, it was God. And I was blessed to be used by him in that capacity. Um, humbled greatly, Lord, by you in every step that Nancy and I were able to have our two wonderful boys, AJ, who came home, we adopted at the, the age of one from South Korea. In 94, 95, he arrived at the age of one. And in 1998, birth of, of Avery, our second child, 
We were blessed by that, humbled and awed, that he would use us as stewards for our boys. But as growing there, still not knowing early on, you know, whether I was a false comfort way back then, and finally God had worked the final fruits of repentance and faith, regeneration me in a period of time or all at once, but knowing now he had me, he would never let me go. And it was called to be his witness and his servant. I'm so grateful for it because nothing good in me, only Christ was good in me. Yet I remain thankful to him that Nancy had continued all through the years by his grace. The marriage is not always easy, but it's always worth fighting for and loved. And if we look to each other and look to him, first he holds us together. And we are tremendously proud and thankful for our boys, for the love, forgiveness, and what goes on. But more about that later. Getting back to, to the the kindness of God, His grace that never lets go, it is sufficient for everything we have. And moving on to looking at God's sovereignty. It was a year ago, April. This Nancy I've been praying about, thinking about after being working at the aquarium in the shark tank all those years, banging my head. Not their fault, mine, just because it's low overhanging. That I could no longer continue, keep doing all I did those many years that we would think about and pray about what it would do. And I felt led to teaching before, because again, I love kids. I love teaching from a biblical worldview. In spite of the many opportunities God had given me before, I tried to to finish well. He'd also give me a love to uh, run. I like doing that and combine those by His grace. In the last couple of years of running and sharing the gospel and those I'd counter out running with, either handing out tracks, tracks or just openly declaring the good news of Christ to those who would listen. In April of 2020, opportunity arose that it, it felt like the right time to leave the aquarium after 31 years. And at that time, we're also unable to celebrate our 30th anniversary where we were to go to Italy due to the coronavirus and its ramifications. So we, we did take some time away to the Carolinas to celebrate the 30th anniversary. What a blessing and gift that was. And our next, next journey will continue in 2020 as we look to what lies ahead under the sovereign land of God. Welcome back. This is Alan again. I think we're on step four of the journey with Alan. As I come to and kind of relay beginning in April 2020. At the point where I led to and we had made that prayerful decision to leave my place of employment after 31 years. With many good memories and many good memories of few people. But solidly thinking that this was what the Lord had intended. Going this year... Continuing on throughout the summer, and I had felt as led to teach, so I had applied for a number of full time teaching positions at this time. Um, no, I didn't have the great amount of teaching experience that many teachers did, but I did feel led. I did love children, love teaching from a biblical worldview. So I wanted to come two opportunities at some local Christian schools, and one of which I thought I would take. But very soon, I learned that it wasn't the right one. And they were very, very, very patient and understanding when I explained that that was not the right one. But the Lord provided an upper opportunity. But at this same time, slowly, at the end of the summer of 2020, more like the end of July into August, when I went up the run, I'd find it, I would be, be fatigued real easy rather be able to go the three to five miles before the end of one mile i would be fatigued and not be able to go on without my legs becoming very tired with this fatigue kept continuing i was also struggling with a an infection on not infection a lesion on my arm which turned out to be bacterial and easily remedied later but also noted twitching 
bone on my arms, my legs, my chest muscles. I overlooked it first due to this lesion on my arm, but it gradually stayed, persisted, and got more. Well, I sought out medical care because of fatigue and because of these, and a variety of tests were under, under carried out to see whether there's something wrong with my blood, anything like there. Lyme disease, all of which were negative, of course. Little you know, did they know, we didn't know what it was. And leading up to finally in September, I was called and saw a neurologist, thanks to my wife and colleagues setting up to get me an appointment in quickly, to run some tests to see what it could be. I saw I still had the twitches. I bet this time I had some cramping in my muscles too. A lot of fatigue. At the time, it was diagnosed later as what I had would be a severe case of what's called benign cramp fasciculation syndrome. Now the neurologist was very clear and told us when he thought that this is what I think you have. Uh, I asked what it was later, but that's where it was after the test results. Because I still had strength, had lots lost strength. I wasn't showing some of the other drastic things. At that time, he laid out and says, well, I can't take it completely off the table. There's still a small chance it could be ALS. I know you were thinking about worrying about that. But there's this very, very small chance of that because you haven't shown the other symptoms. Well, we continued on. God had graciously, meanwhile, provided an opportunity to serve in another, another local Christian school, Rosedale Baptist School, which I'm thankful for them because of this ministry opportunity they provided, and I was happy to serve there, serve as an education consultant um, alongside the, the teaching staff and the others there to those who were virtual learning students. This was a real blessing, as well as a real learning experience, because you'll throw headlong into what is more, much more than a part-time job. Well, again, I'm thankful for that opportunity. But as the fall progressed, my fatigue and symptoms continued to get no better. And at this time, looking forward to the, the end of the fall, I could no longer carry it in that capacity just because I could not keep up with it physically. And they were very gracious to let them know about that later at the school. Well, because my symptoms did not improve, in fact, they somewhat deteriorated, my wife and I sought and stayed in touch with neurologist skin and called me in for a second test. And this was not until January of 2021, where we begin our next journey. Hi, welcome back, Alan again. Moving up to the journey with Alan, I think we're step five. And we've kind of fast forward all the way up to 2021. Welcome back as we begin to see the sovereignty of God at work, where this wretched sinner, saved by grace through faith in Christ alone, as I come to you and, and clearly declare his mighty works. Well, talking about the test, I had my symptoms had not not improved, had deteriorated. The test that was carried by a neurologist was redone in January of 2021. Only at this time, I had lost strength. The test results were much different. My left side, particularly my left arm and my left hand strength, as well as my feet had lost strength. And the, these two tests, EMG, Nerve conduction study did show signs consistent with what's called motor neuron disease or amyotrophic lateral scler sclerosis, ALS. And that was there, that was kind of initially devastating. But can I say we're totally shocked because the way I had uh, declined? Uh, no. So when I, I prayed, we tried to console each other and realize that we just have to realize it. But finding out more, find out how to get involved with a ALS clinic, which is a multidisciplinary clinic where you 
team works together on you. We're faced with two choices, and they were both great choices, the University of Maryland team or the Johns Hopkins team. And we decided at that point to go with the Johns Hopkins ALS clinic. So therefore, we met with um, another great neurologist at Johns Hopkins the following week on the 12th of January, where the previous diagnosis was indeed confirmed. It was ALS and to find out what the next steps were. So again, we weren't surprised, but we wanted to know, you know, I'll find out all we could. Which leads, you know, some people would say, well, why do bad things happen to good people? Well, A, I'm certainly not a good person. I justly deserve the wrath of God. But yet in his love and mercy, he granted faith, repentance, and regenerationism, unworthy person in the person of Jesus Christ, who alone bore the sins that I'm the wrath of God in my place to do that. So I'm not a good person. Secondly, there are no good person. That only happened once, that was 2,000 years ago, and that was Jesus Christ, where bad things happen to a good person. So I will over, over, and over declare to your dear family and friends that if you have not confessed, repented of your sins, and fallen upon Christ, the finished work of Christ, death, burial, resurrection alone, as expounded throughout scriptures in Old Testament and New Testament, and in 1 Corinthians 15, where he is crucified, dead, buried, ascended, and a soon reigning king, I urge you, and out of love, implore you to turn to him alone. But yet here we are, we were both faced with this diagnosis of ALS, walking this new path, but yet knowing that God is sovereign, that he could at any minute, merely because of his own choosing, decide to heal me, to arrest his progression, or let it proceed. We don't always like it, but we know that he is sovereign and Whatever it is, it will ultimately be for my good and his glory. And I rest knowing him and him alone. I will have a home with him and to be with him forever, whether he should call me home before then or whether he turn as he has promised and he's coming quickly at any day. But I know that I can trust him fully and his sovereign will. So. We look forward and we've continued to seek out additional appointments, blessed by a wonderful team of doctors. Pray for them, for those that treat all those who are sick and how they do that and setting up, walking along to where, um, moving to March of 2021. Thankfully I can still breathe. I do require respiratory support sometimes, especially at night, which helps. I went through a period where I had severe headaches and I couldn't sleep for weeks and weeks and weeks. But now I can with support of a BiPAP. Wonderful technology it is. And I can still walk, although not much limited, with currently the support of a rollator, will soon be transitioning into a wheelchair. And eating, although I have more difficulty swallowing, will be soon. Um, being receiving a feeding tube to receive most of my nutrition and thereby because this and this has they both by decreased breathing as well as increased difficulty in swallowing but yet not always like this but knowing again it's in the sovereign will of god experienced by some of these encouraged by a lot of scriptures but one of my life verses and I love this, it's Galatians 6, 14. But far be it from me to boast, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world is crucified to me and I to the world. My wish is that all of the world, there's this is only temporary, and we see it more and more, but we know that look to Christ and alone, our hopes and our dreams, 
and everything is fulfilled because he never changes. Same yesterday and today and forever. But to give you for this day's journey from Philippians 3, but everything, being in verse 7, that was a gain to me, I've considered to be a loss because of Christ. More than that, I also consider everything to be a loss in view of surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. Therein is a most important and eternal and value for anyone there can ever be. Stay tuned for the next adventure of Journey with Alan. Bless you. Moving in, after we were blessed to be at Asketh Presbyterian Church for many years, the Lord had first led it on Nancy's heart that we were going to go somewhere, just uh, seeking somewhere else. So we wound up and the Lord landed us at Faith Fellowship Church uh, about seven years ago. We were blessed there at Christ Centered Bible Believing Church with many loving brothers and sisters there. And we were surrounded by those that a solid love for the Word of God and the Gospel of Christ and for each other again and blessed to there to grow and also more than blessed to be able to serve the Lord there teaching kids Sunday school as well as serve in part-time deacon a true blessing the Lord ask us to go and to serve so we're serving it and doing it unto him this was left up for Previous videos, I want to make sure we added that on too, because we have uh, been more than blessed by that fellowship, both at Faith, at Asquith, and in the true body of Christ. As we go out to seek those who are lost, to love them, Lord, love them with the love of the Lord, track them to Christ, and blessed by being able to be in contact with the, the Hope Movement, a wonderful ministry with World Like Global, Global Mission to proclaim the gospel and bring Christ-like love to those in need. In Baltimore City, in Central and South America, and in Africa, in the Philippines, in all where, all places. And it's blessed to be able to involved with that ministry as well. And blessed to be able to serve alongside Jonathan and his family, Paul and kids. So, we want to make sure we did teach that so we currently go and fellowship with them, the body. But as you know, the true body of Christ is united. We just stand for the true gospel. And this is one sinner saved by grace. Who I hate the sinner remains in me more and more as I see the holiest of God more and more. This will be a short video added on. We will continue our journey later. Uh, Alan was um, more than just a, a deacon at this church and a member, and he was uh, became a, a great friend. And he was the board member on a, on our the Hope Movement. He went uh, on mission trips with us to other countries, and he did so much for this church and for individuals. I'm sure people can tell a lot of stories, um, but they can also, we, you know, we could also tell a lot of things about Alan. I mean, he, that people probably don't even know about him, that he was a scientist, a world-renowned scientist. He was a marine biologist that um, risked his life um, caring for sharks and studying sharks and uh, even taught uh, president's daughters about sharks and was secret service nearby and no one knew about that. Um, they gave tours to famous people that no, he, no one would have known because Alan was the type of guy if you held, if he held the door for you and said, thank you, Alan, you're such a good guy, you'd be like, I'm just a wretched sinner saved by the grace of God. That's, that was Alan. That was his response for everything. He was uh, super humble and uh, he he had a battle of his life that uh, we didn't expect. ALS uh, hit him hard. Um, you know, last year, thinking about this time last year, we were doing evangelism at uh, abortion mills, trying to save babies and preach the gospel. We were 
down in North Avenue preaching the gospel and he was carrying big bottles of water and, and now a year later, now we're announcing this, uh, it shows that just like Ecclesiastes, life is, is fragile, it's a vapor. Uh, we're, we're here today and we could be gone tomorrow and that's why we need to make sure that we're right with God. And uh, the thing that with Alan though is that his passion more than all these other things that he, that he did in his life um, was to evangelize, to preach the gospel. Um, people don't know all the things he's done. On, he worked 30 years at the National Aquarium, and every day in his lunch break, he dedicated his time to, to share the gospel with people randomly outside of the, in the harbor area. I, I printed out a thousand tracks that we created, and every Sunday he asked for tracks, and uh, he used up all those tracks. Even just a few weeks ago when he, they moved him temporarily to Gilcrest Hospice, I walked into his room and there laying on the countertop was the tracks. And when, he, uh, when, he, when uh, they gave him his wheelchair, he had a bag that he called his track bag that he would pass out his tracks even in, in that moment. And, um, you know, I think about his last moments. Um, last week I was there at his house and he had a caretaker from Africa. And uh, she was not a believer, and he shared the gospel with her every single day that she came. And I captured this moment on, on video, it's, it's online, but he's sharing the gospel with her as she's caring for his feet. And his feet were so delicate that when just touching the metal pot, the bones were so fragile that it hurt, caused him excruciating pain. And he still shared the gospel with her, and he said, I'm telling you this because I love you. And, and that, was, that was one of the memories that I had. And Monday, um, he passed away a, a few days after that. I uh, went to his house, and he, uh, he, in his weak state, the morphine has increased. His pain was in, excruciating. Uh, he never complained. And he, uh, he said, whispering, are you going to go evangelize this Saturday? And I said, yes. And he goes, well, if the Lord heals me, I'll be there with you. Uh, that was Alan. None of the works, baptism, anything else. And we live for her. When she teaches her hearts, we will never good. That's right, so that's why it just, I just tell you the truth about what the Catholic Church teaches. To such as that, anybody who teaches a different God. Why we do that? Because we love people and tell the truth. John chapter three. There was a man from the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to him at night and said. Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs you do unless God was with him. Jesus replied, Truly I tell you, unless someone is born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. How can anyone be born when he is old? Nicodemus asked him. Can he enter his mother's womb a second time and be born? Jesus answered, Truly I tell you, that unless someone is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Whatever is born of the flesh is flesh, and whatever is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not be amazed that I told you that you must be born again. The wind blows where it pleases and you hear it wind, but you don't know where it comes from or where it's going. So it is with anyone born of the Spirit. How can these things be? asked Nicodemus. Are you the teacher of Israel? and don't know these things? Jesus replied. Truly I tell you, we speak what we know 
and we testify to what we have seen, but you do not accept our testimony. If I had told you about earthly things and you don't believe, how will you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended from heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God loved the world in this way. He gave his one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Anyone who believes in him is not condemned, but anyone who does not believe is already condemned because he has not yet believed in the name of the one and only Son of God. This is the judgment. The light has come into the world and people love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone who does evil hates the light and avoids it so that his deeds may not be exposed but anyone who lives by the truth comes to the light so that his works may be shown to be accomplished by God John 3 verses 1 to 21